Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my delicious guest today, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors at Blue Chew. Um, we all know that erectile dysfunction is a problem that affects many, many men, but it's no longer a death sentence for your sex life. Thanks to Blue Chew, you can regain your confidence in the bedroom. Try Blue Chew today for free with code Holly at BlueChew.com. That's code Holly at BlueChew.com. Try it for free. Pay only $5 in shipping. Okay, so my guest, I referred to him as delicious because not only is he delicious, but he has a cooking podcast where he interviews other sex workers. So I think that that's a lot of fun. We're definitely going to get into that. He's an award-winning performer who moved to LA to become a stunt man. And now he is a stunt cock. He also has a podcast that I just mentioned where he invites his co-stars to join him in the kitchen as he concocts exciting recipes and spills the beans about the porn industry. See what I did there? Mm -hmm. Let's welcome Nathan Bronson. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I am lovely. Lovely. It's are a good you? Day. Yeah. It's been a good day. Also, something about the uh, one of the sponsors. I, I remember that for the first time I heard the commercial, it was uh, Snoop Dogg talking about it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was. Like, I think it was Blue Chews or one of those ones. And he's like, you know, this is for guys with erectile dysfunction. I don't got it, but maybe you do. And I was just like. <laughs> like, quick disclaimer. Yeah, I was like, this is. <laughs> it's fan. not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> So I was hoping you were going to go on that line, too. It's like, I don't have that issue, but maybe you do. I mean, to be fair, I do not have that issue because I don't have a penis. But if you have a penis and you have this issue, Blue Chew is there for you. Wink, wink. Just got to use code Holly. Mm. I like how we like made this whole intro about my sponsor. It's great. <laughs> just trying to get those bucks come in for you. Yeah, just please buy, keep buying ad spots. <laughs> so, Nathan, mm -hmm. um, I guess let's start from the beginning. Okay. Let's start from your history as a stuntman coming to LA and then ending up in the adult industry. How did that path start for you? Well, if we're going back far, the first time I was like, I remember being homeless at one point. I was at my buddy's house uh, trying to figure out what the fuck I was going to do with my life, right? And I was just living out of my car. I think I was working at Ross. I was working at Abercrombie & Fitch as one of the people working at the front. And I was also working a drywalling job. Uh, so I was just doing all these different jobs. So you were working three jobs. Yeah. And you were homeless. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it was the middle of summer in Inland Empire. So it was fucking hot. Yeah. I got in a really bad car crash at one of these points because I just wasn't able to sleep. And I, I, I didn't do meth, which is, uh, you know, not common in Inland, Inland Empire. So, yeah. But anyway, so I was. Maybe that's where you went wrong. I, I think that is because I could have got this <laughs> done a lot better. You know, I could've you could have. You could have worked so many more jobs. I could have. I could have. And I'm fucking up. That's where, you know, <laughs> you know. You know, you learn lessons in life. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I um, I remember watching a movie called um, oh, what was it? Death Proof. Mm. It was a Quentin Tarantino movie. It was uh, it was a um, a double feature they made. It was uh, Death Proof and another one about zombies, like the zombie movie. And I remember watching, and it was about uh, these uh, stunt women going out, renting a car, and this guy who was trying to kill him in another car. And it's like this car chase scene they have, and they end up killing the guy. And it was the first time I realized, I was like, wait, I can do that for a living that sounds way better than anything else I was going to do. So mm -hmm. I started kind of going on this fact fighting mission about how to be a stunt person. And I ended up going up to this school up in Washington that kind of just lit, like shows you all these different um, things you could do. Like, being a stunt person, they show you how to do little fights. They show you to do high falls, fire burns, wire work, doing all these sorts of different things. So it doesn't, it doesn't teach you how to do them. It just gives you the opportunity to do it like more than around five times on most of the things. So would you like specialize in one of those things? Now I can, but okay. like, it's like anything you do there, it's not you specialize. It's like, it's like, it's like going to a grocery store and then you get one of one piece of everything mm -hmm. and it's all stuff you've never done, never had before. So you get to try a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's just giving you the taste of it. And so giving you a taste of it and having some people around you be like, hey, when you go to L.A. or go to this place, go to this place is what you want to do. This is what, how you want to do it. Go try to get your stunt reel, get all these things together. So it's just giving you the ability to kind of have a stunt reel so you can show uh, stunt coordinators that you can kind of do whatever they're asking for, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's the basics of what going up there was. But um, I got a DUI before I went up there. And so I came back down. I lived in the Empire, couldn't really go and do stunts. So I ended up getting in a band, was in a band for a couple of years, moved to Santa Barbara, ended up becoming a cook. And then I was dating this girl for a while. And she's like, why are you in Santa Barbara? Why aren't you in LA? And I was like, 
that's a good question. I don't have a DUI anymore. I can go to LA. So went down here, uh, got a job at Universal Studios doing the Fireburns there. Um, but I had to leave my job as a head chef in the kitchen. And so leaving that and then going and doing uh, work at Universal Studios is like the, the money wasn't even close. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I'm not sure if you know this, but theme park stunt people get paid fucking garbage. Hmm. Okay, so like at Universal, I do a fire burn. A rappel out of the 30 foot rafter straight into the crowd, and then I do a fight scene. Mm -hmm. A fire burn, I'm assuming, is like when you're. I'm just... all, I'm completely on fire. Okay. So, whole body's on fire. Um, if you go to Universal and you see that they, well, it's not there anymore, but there's a thing called the special effects stage. Mm -hmm. And that's where I, that's where I worked. And so we'd come down from the rafter, rappel down, and like just pretty much let go of the rope and just drop straight there and then stop right above people's heads. Then you walk on the stage. Wait, how do you. There must be like a safety mechanism that stops you before you hit them, right? Your hand. Yeah. So yeah. wait, if you don't grab it, you're gonna like collapse into this crowd of people. No, no, you're going into the aisle way, but the aisle way is like mm, this big, so you have to, you drop right in the middle of them. How do you know when to stop yourself? Yeah, that's why we get paid those uh, shitty dollars. But like, <laughs> I mean, it's so what you're using is you're uh, you're on the on the line, and you have a uh, a safety eight or a, a no a speed eight. I can't remember what the hell it's called, but it's basically just like this uh, little eight p uh, piece of eight metal. It looks like it, it looks like an eight like that, and you wrap the rope in through, hook it up to your uh, harness, and then you your braking is your uh, backhand, so that's right in your ass crack, and you just literally that's how you slow down. But in order to make it like go fast, you pretty much let it go like that, and then you stop it as soon as you get to a spot where you need to. Mm -hmm. And you're wearing a glove because otherwise you just rip. Yeah, your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's how you do it. So you slide down, go right there. Oh, everyone's like, oh my god, I didn't know they were up there. And then you <laughs> come down, like, ha, ha, ha. and then you go on the stage. And they did a little talking, and then we start a fight scene. So if I was doing the number two role, I'm the guy who's winning the fight. So I go in the middle. These two guys fight me. I get thrown around the stage a bunch. I kick a guy into a trash can. Um, and then once we get through the whole fight scene, I run back behind stage. I start prepping myself to get lit on fire. And so, yeah, do the whole that, come back on stage. And I literally be completely on fire about this close to you. And so, but in order to do all that, that's just one show. You usually do four a day and you're getting paid. I can't remember how much it was. 32 bucks a show. Fuck off. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. It's because there's no, there's no union for the stunts people in the, in the, because it's too small. It's like in, there's in not, the theme park, in theme parks, yeah. But in movies, there are. Oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, there's, where, yeah. And so it's like, but in actors in um and Universal or any of the theme parks, they have Agva, or Aqua, something like that. But mm -hmm. they have that. Um, but even go farther into that, like I also did. Uh, if you've gone to Universal and seen the Raptors, like in those guys in the Raptor outfits, you never seen that. I haven't been to so Universal in there's forever. These, Big ass raptor outfits that you get into. They're like 98 pounds and all the weights on your shoulder and your hips. And you're walking around these things inside of them. Oh. And it's just like styrofoam. And so the middle of summer, it's so hot in these oh, things that you're about to pass out. I used to have videos on my phone inside this thing. I'm just like <sighs> just chomping around. <laughs> and and the only reason it was a 20 minute set. And the only reason we got to go in sooner was because of um, Akva. Akva I, can't, I think it's Akva. But either way, they uh, the the actors who were going out with us, it was too hot for them. So we got to go in 10 minutes earlier instead of 20 minutes because of the, because of them. But as some people, we did, you don't have rights. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, it was a, uh, it's a whole, and I, but I don't, I, I'm, I love doing it. I don't, not the, not the Raptor shoot. That thing fucked up my hips and my back. I was, <laughs> this is awesome, yeah. like fun. You, you, the first time you might have met me was when I was in those suits all the time. Cause mm -hmm. it just hurts so fucking bad. But, um, like so basically, the, if you go to Universal Studios and you see the guy in the Raptor suits, why don't you tuck a little like twenty into their well, dinosaur I, thong? You know what? I, so <laughs> my buddy just went there yesterday, and like when I was doing it, we could get like I could get to like try to chomp at you. I could bite you in the Raptor mm -hmm. suit. Apparently now they don't let people even near them. Which was like half the fun for me was trying to make kids throw up <laughs> because <laughs> parents would be like just over their kids at this point, yeah. and so they just like put them in the Raptor's face, and I just try to bite at the kid a bunch. Yeah. And which is a terrible idea because I have no depth perception. The yeah. neck on the raptor is maybe three feet long with the head, uh -huh. and you can extend it all out, and you can make the the jaw clamp like ch chomp Did at it. Did you ever accidentally bite somebody? No, I got close a couple times. 
Wow. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, like there was a handful of times where you almost pass out. If you fall over in that thing, you can't get back up. <laughs> yeah. It's called <laughs> Raptor Down. <laughs> <laughs> You just see like a raptor yeah. leg on the side of the It's, it's just the legs because you're inside this thing like this. Oh my God. And I remember I, I went up to the owners. I was like, hey, do you want to make this an experience if they have a raptor down scenario for everyone to watch? And I was like, I was like, here's the idea. Loudspeakers. You put the sad Jurassic Park song go over the loudspeakers, right? <laughs> and then the raptor handler, he comes out and he pulls a syringe out of his, uh, like his, I think he has a vest on, right? And he picks a kid out and he makes the, he like goes up to the raptor. He's like, can't do it. And he makes the kid inject the raptor and you see the eye slowly flutter and go down. Because that kid's never going to forget that. And then he, he had to put the raptor down. Fuck off. They won't, they didn't do it. I asked him to and they said no. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted because I was looking at my questions and I literally thought you were telling me a true story. I'm like, what a way to traumatize a Oh, child. well, it was, that's half the reason you have these stupid <laughs> raptors there. It's like, we, let's make a, let's make a memory, you know? Let's, <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah, Cause that kid's going to remember this. Cause besides that, Universal sucks. <laughs> Yeah. For the amount of money you pay in there, ugh, it's terrible. Yeah. Oh. I haven't been there in forever. It's... And my, my kid's too young to want to go, but I, I, in the near future, I will be forced to take her to theme parks. It's coming. <laughs> that day is coming. Oh, Disney... Right now, she doesn't know what Disneyland is. but Oh, Disneyland's coming. a coming with those long-ass lines. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, joy. <laughs> so, okay. So, clearly, being a stuntman was oh. Not working out for you. Not really paying the bills. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's what I've got completely off topic. So then where did we go from there? So it's not that it wasn't paying off. Just that I like it. So it wasn't paying as much as uh, as that was. And so my girlfriend at the time was like, why don't you get in porn? I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to do that. That seems neat. We're swingers. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, she didn't want to do it because she was had some uh, she didn't like the way her body looked. Um, and I was like, I don't give a fuck. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. So I remember trying to search around. And at that time, uh, Isaiah Maxwell was working at a different studio where he was an agent. I don't remember. Yes. This. Yeah. Yes. He, he was a, no, he was a PR guy. I think. Yeah. And so I went to that place and it was the first, my first experience of anything. And I remember trying to go in there and they're like, all right, take off your clothes, get hard. And I was like, uh, and so it was like a bunch of weird scenarios, which I was not prepared for, but they're like, Oh, we'll try. If we can't get you working like 190 days, then you're off the contract, which now looking back, I shouldn't have signed any fucking contract, but, they didn't get me any work for 190 days. So okay, I so I, I – because I'm curious about this whole, like, go ahead, take off your clothes and get hard. Because I used to have to do this with guys that would come in for go-sees when yeah. I was working for my mom. Like, they would have to get hard. I had a whole system mm. that I did to, like, try to help them get hard without mm. me actually having to help them. Yeah. So, like, what – did they just literally put you in a room and be like, get hard and stand yeah. there and stare at you? Did they give you, like, tools to help you out? No, like, no, no. just get hard. Seriously? Yeah. And they just stayed in the room with you? Yeah. And they were just like... I think at one point the guy left. Okay. Uh, but then there was a girl in there at least. And so I was like... But I was like, I didn't know if I should stare at her or like I didn't... So I was like yeah. trying not to, but yeah. I was like, I need something. Now it's like it probably wouldn't be nearly as hard. But like at the time I was like, I was just a guy who did swinging a lot, you know? Yeah. I didn't know... I No one told me this was going to be a thing that I had to do. Yeah. Because if I knew that, I would have taken something because I would have been ready right. for that. Um, but yeah, so I went in there, got... I think I got mostly hard and yeah, they never got me a job. So. Cause we used to like, we had a back room and I used to put, and this is before cell phones, by mm. the way, this is how, oh. this is how old I am. What? Um, so we used to put guys in the back room and it was so funny because like none of us ever wanted to do, we called it like taking Polaroids. Mm. None of us ever wanted to do it. Like not me, yeah. not Amber, not my mom. Like, yeah. No one wanted to do this. It was just always the most awkward thing. Yes. And um, it's so funny because uh, we were, you know, talking about Seth Gamble earlier. Seth, that's when I first met Seth. He came in to, like, do a go-see. And he actually, like, told me about, like, the experience and just how awkward it was. Yeah. And it's just funny because, you know, like, look where he is now. Mm -hmm. But so we put him in this back room. I would give them a handful of magazines. And I'd be like, okay, just, like, knock on the door when you're ready. And so I'd just be sitting outside the door because I had to be in earshot, right? But mm. I didn't want to be, like, obtrusive. So I could, like, kind of hear the shuffling and, like, the yeah. in there. And then I'd hear, like, a, I'm ready. And mm. I'd, like, run in with my camera and, like, try to take a picture before it went down. And yeah. it was, um, yeah, that was not my favorite thing to do. No, I could imagine. that. that this. I remember, like, oh, after two or three years of being in this job, I actually went on, like, I forget what company it was for. They asked me to do a gozi. I was like, Why? I have videos out there. Well, yeah. like, why do you want me to get hard for you? It was yeah. like, such a weird thing. I think it was fucking Reality Kings. Was Maybe like, they just wanted to meet you. But I, I worked for them before that. 
Oh. Yeah, it was like company I already worked for a handful of times, and oh, they want. Weird. Yeah, I was like, why? All right, whatever. Fuck it. Maybe yeah. the lady just wants to see me get hard. I don't know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that whole ghosty thing is such a weird thing to do. Yeah. Um. But oh yeah, so after that and that not working out, I ended up being at a CrossFit gym. Um, that I was pretty much helping clean just so I could like work out there, and. Uh, I was telling him like, oh yeah, I tried to get into porn, just hasn't worked out so far. And the guy I was training with was like, yo, that girl's in porn. Maybe she can help you. It was a chick named Mina Mason. Okay. I'm not sure you remember her. She was in for a while. She left, but this was right as Society 15 was opening up. Mm -hmm. So she got me in contact with Randy and um, someone else. And uh, they, they were the agents for Kendra Lusk, new company. Mm -hmm. And, um, they met me at uh, some Mexican food place, and, and I, at the time I had a huge beard and really long hair. And they're like, hey, if you cut the beard and cut the hair, uh, we'll get you a job. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fucking sweet. So got with them. First job I ever did, I remember uh, the agent saying, hey, you don't need to get tested. It's Thanksgiving. No one's going to hire you. And the first thing I was ever supposed to have was with Kendra Lust as a pool boy. And I get there, and they're like, and she's like, well, you don't have a test, so I really want to suck your dick, but sorry. And I was like, you could just not have said that. That would have been really fucking awesome. I was listening to your employee not to do this. And so my first ever scene was with um, Barrett Blade for a Nuru scene, which I fucking hate Nuru scenes. They're mm -hmm. awful. Uh, with uh, Tiffany Watson. They're, what are Nuru scenes again? It's when you're on that blow-up mattress and they're dumping the gel, like cold-ass oh. gel all over you oh, and it's sticky. Oh, God. And, yeah. I fucking hate them. Hate that him. that is like and also like so hard to get traction. Yeah, we can't. Like the slippery. Mm -hmm. Is it normally like a pool floaty that they put you on? No, it's like the, it's like a fucking shitty bloat mattress. It's like they have specific ones for new roo. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, it's just terrible because it's cold, and they always want to do them in January. And <laughs> then as soon as it like okay, it kind of got warm. Well, now it's drying up, and now it's sticky. So it's like tacky as hell. Yeah. Um, so it's just rough all around. It's not fun. It's not comfortable. And then I have to fucking open the person up and we're sliding around. So it's just like you're trying to focus on fucking them. But it's just it's just hard all around. So this was your first scene? That was my first scene. And that's like one of the most – that's one of the more difficult scenes to do. I, I think that depends because I met people who like those things. So when it comes to like sex, mm -hmm. is like is it difficult? It was difficult for me. I don't like mm -hmm. them. I hate them. Mm -hmm. But then again – I did a glory hole and I was like, oh, this is great. I just stand here. This is fucking awesome. Yeah. Some people hate those, you know? Um, yeah. Or like uh, VR. I'm apparently really good at VR. Yeah. Fucking hate it half the time, but it's like, I'm good at it. Yeah. And some people just fucking can't do it. So it's yeah. just, it just just depends on what you're. Yeah. And yeah. then can you explain to our audience what like doing a VR scene entails for a guy and why one mm. might find it difficult? Don't breathe. <laughs> The whole time. No, um, so basically what it VR is the virtual reality, and they're trying to be they we're putting you in the place where you can be me. So they're putting a camera like right here, and then the microphones are right there. So breathing isn't exactly your friend. Making noise isn't exactly your friend. Also using your hands isn't exactly your friend. Or things you can do at all. So you um, basically have to be completely frozen. Frozen and but then also you want to help the girl out. So if you want to do anything, it's just like an ab workout where you're throwing your hips in the air, just mm -hmm. trying to give them something back. But the reason these are um, some people might think this is awesome. Some people might think this is terrible. But one of the problems is because a lot of people think that every girl in this job is amazing at sex. I'm going to tell you that's not true. <laughs> no, no way. And nor does every girl want to fucking be there. <laughs> They'll sign the paperwork, but it doesn't mean they're going to bring that fucking attitude to work. So you get girls who are just fucking garbage on like in their first 20 minutes is them doing everything by themselves. They're giving a hand job. They're giving a blow job. They're writing. And there are just some people out there who I'm only guessing – maybe have never walked a day in their life because the leg muscle they have is not there. Mm. And uh, and I understand. I'm not saying riding's not hard. I understand. It's I, awful. It's awful. I get it. But play with the distance. Play with your environment. Lean over. Do this. I've, I've done up and over for a really long time, but that's because you find those places. And luckily enough with VR, they want you close to the camera so you can kind of bend over and make it look like you're – a mm -hmm. weird it looks it seems weird to you but it works out for them you know mm -hmm. and also because i can put my legs up and if, as long as we have a good understanding we can make it work really well you know 
uh, ride for a little bit, then grind, 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 ride for a little bit, grind, grind, grind. But then you get some girls who just just sit on you and they just do this the whole time. And if I'm not really turned on, well, I'm just going to go flaccid because I can't feel anything. Mm -hmm. So that's what kind of makes it hard. It's a lot more work on the girl. Whereas a lot of times in a boy-girl scene, like the guy will carry at least like some or most of the scenes sometimes, especially if the girl is not really like good at – She's not a good mover. Yeah, I can. If she's a pillow princess, I can fucking, I can make it work. You know, mm-hmm. I can throw her around, put her there, here, here. Yeah. As long as she's, you know, happy, not going to scream at me in a little bit. Yeah. Which there's definitely people who've done that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it, it makes it tougher because the girl has to use a lot more of her muscle to do something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, and also the hard part is because if the girl starts like just it in, in your head as the talent, you're like, this girl's just not giving a fuck. This girl is just f- like, cause all your bad thoughts are just going through your head and you're just like, I just gotta stay hard. I just gotta stay hard. I just gotta stay hard. Just think of good things about her. I can't fuck. Yeah. And you're just trying your best. And not every day is like this. You know, there's always fucking amazing days. I've worked with some girls. Where I'm like, yo, can you stop doing whatever you're doing? I'm about to come and we are just five seconds in. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. So, you know, there's good days, there's bad days, just like every other jobs or uh, there's ups and downs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think a lot of guys don't realize like it's a mental mm. game almost as much as anything because you're working under all of these, you know, different conditions. And like you said, some days are great. Some days you're working with someone like Angela White, mm. who's like everybody loves to work with. She's into the, she's into it, you yeah. know, like she's, she's going to deliver. And and how she's always be able to be into it. I just give her so yeah, many props. I mean, she's like that, that I've never worked with her and she's been like off. Like yeah. she doesn't have off days. She's super consistent. Um, and then, you know, there's some girls who are just not as enthusiastic mm. or maybe you just don't vibe with them, yep. you know, like different different personalities. Maybe it's you're working outside in Las Vegas in July in mm. the sun and it's like 120 degrees. Maybe uh. you're working in a pool in January oh. and it's 30 degrees. So like, good. you know, there's so many variables that can make or break a scene. And I think a lot of people are just like, well, I mean, you just got a hot chick in front of you. How could you like not have a hard dick all the time? But that's not the case. You know, I remember um, I remember being on a, a very, very big company set. Right. And uh, we're just on lunch and that goes to talk about like we're talking about something. And basically they're like, oh, Nathan, this is purgatory. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, if this is my purgatory, this is really hell. And one of the and one of the. Uh, I believe female liaisons was like, well, at least you get a fuck them. And I was like, I don't even have enough time to tell you how stupid you are right now. <laughs> I just don't. It's like, yeah, that, that'd be like me going up to anyone who's been in Iraq. Well, at least you get to shoot guns. Yeah. Yeah. Dummy. Yeah. It's cool. I get to fuck people. I don't really get to come the way I want to. It's like, I don't get to jerk off. I don't get to do all the things I want. Like we, we were, I was talking to some buddies the other day about the fact that like how many times they get to have sex with people and they're like, Oh, but you have sex all the time. I'm like, kinda. When was the last time I had sex off camera, you know, and actually got to have sex. Mm-hmm. It was like once in that last month. So how is having camera, how is, uh, how is having sex on camera and off camera different? I don't have the longest cock, so I have to open up tremendously. So I'm only getting so much of my dick in there because it's all about getting the light in there mm-hmm. so the camera can see it. Mm-hmm. Or to have to hear them be like, yo, Nathan, your legs are too big. Get them out of the shot. You know, so you got to figure out ways to open up the camera, especially if they don't want to move or open up the girl to the camera, especially if she doesn't know how to do it. So it's like instead of just being able to focus on what's going on, the pleasure, the intimacy, all the things that are happening, I'm worried about where's the camera, where's the light, where's this, where's the other guy coming in? Is he hard right now? Is he going to jump back in? Are we swapping the girl out? Is her pussy raw? She asked. She said not to do all these things. But was that something the girl said yesterday? Because I work every fucking day, so I'm trying mm-hmm. to remember all these different things. You know what? I'm just not going to do anything. I'm not going to grab her with her or do all the stuff that maybe she wants because I can't fucking remember. <laughs> and it's like, oh, was the Viagra going to kick in? Is my dick feeling good today? Am I, is my dick going to work at all? I don't know. So it's just <laughs> lots of things. Did I leave the stove on? You know, <laughs> it's the ability to fucking, because you do this so often to think about everything that's going on and yeah. still be hard. I've had times where I can't feel my dick at all and it's hard and I'm just like, well, well that's good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that people underestimate how difficult your job is. <sighs> and I hear so often from guys like you know, I mean, I'm sure you get these DMs all the time. I want to be in the porn industry. Yeah. I want to do porn. I could totally do it. I love sex. I mm-hmm. love women. And it's like, as much as all of those things may be true, 
like there's so much more to the job and it's not as easy as you think it would be. And it's not just all like pleasure and all everything's wonderful and every day sex with Angela White. (laughs) (laughs) I've had sex with Angela White once and it was, and it's fantastic. I'm so sad for you that you only got to have that once. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's, it's hopefully one of these days, come on, Angela. Um, but like, uh, you know, something that I don't think is talked about very much because in male on the male side, nobody gives a fuck about the male because mm-hmm. you're go get your dick sucked, bro. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. You know, it, or was it get your face out of the shot, Nathan? We only care about your dick. You know, mm-hmm. you hear stuff like that because it's, it's mostly focused on how making the girl look good because yeah. we could get another guy in here in a second. Of course, you have to train that guy up to do the job. But like that's that's the mentality. Mm-hmm. You know, you're in this small group of guys who can only who get to do this thing and mm-hmm. like you always feel like someone else is going to take your job as soon as you you do something wrong um but i've definitely been a big proponent of explaining how this job works in the best of my ability in every way i've done it i've i've said uh how many times i've shot my dick up i've said i take viagra almost every scene i've said how i feel after the like a scene where it goes wrong or bad how i only think about the bad scenes i barely ever think about the ones i did that were good you know Mm -hmm. because those are the things you think about all the time because you're always afraid you're going to lose the work Mm. so it's or, or fucking or a completely other side i've had to go do scenes for when my friends died like right afterwards i remember jake adam died and he's one of my closest friends in this job and i got called that morning to go do a scene and they're like oh and jake died and that's how i found out and then I got to set and I found out that was his scene. How did you get through that? I do I do better in days like that than I do when I have a girlfriend and she's giving me shit. Mm. Um, it's easier for me for some reason, maybe because I don't deal with death. I don't know. But I've had my grandparents die and I was doing scenes. I had to go run down to wherever they were to like help uh, bury them afterwards. And it's like I can work in those uh, parameters. Mm. Um. I don't know why that's easier for me. Is it almost like maybe you coping mechanism? Yeah. Like maybe. you want to take your focus off of what happened because I yeah. mean, I remember, you know, obviously like I'm not doing scenes and trying to keep my yeah. dick hard, but like when my dad died, I mean, I, I did a meeting the next day. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I, I kept, I, I stepped back from work a little bit, but you know, even people were like, well, you know, I understand like your dad just died and I'm like, what am I, I don't, what am I going to do? Like sit around my house and cry all day. Like, yeah. I, I don't like, I need to think about something else. I need to do something else because like, I can't just sit here and like this fucking grief. Like, yeah, I, I, I don't do, I don't do well in not doing, <laughs> I think is a good way of saying it. It's like, I, I have to do stuff. I mean, yeah. like if you look at my life on a daily basis, like I, it's, I go to, I work out, I go to work, I come home and I'm trying to fill my life with as many things possible when it comes to stunt work and just train all that. It's like, let's do martial arts, let's do parkour, let's do uh wire work, fire burns, all these different things. Let's do cooking show. Let's do this. Let's do that. And so it's like, it's always trying to keep my, my life busy. Now my therapist would say that's because I, I have a hard time being alone with myself. Uh, fuck you. Um, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 something I always do. So being alone with a thought of a friend dying, it's like I don't know what to do. Especially when I didn't really like most of the people we hung around, mm-hmm. or and I like it's like my grandparents died. It's like what am I gonna do? You know, it's like I didn't have enough time to spend with them, but I'm sure they'd be proud that I've like I'm building a life for myself. Mm-hmm. Maybe not so proud of the job. I'm sure my grandpa at one point would be like, Fucking nice. <laughs> my grandma. I don't know. Maybe she'd been stoked. As long I don't as know. you're safe, Nathan. Yeah, as long as you're happy. As long as you're happy. <laughs> she was full of piss Find and vinegar. Find yourself a nice girl. Yeah. <laughs> Find yourself a nice Christian woman. No, she wasn't Christian. <laughs> um, but like, so it's like, I don't want to, like, I always tell people, it's like, if I die, I swear to God, if you guys are starting to cry and like do all this stuff, I want you to tell terrible stories about me the whole time. Don't talk about, oh, he was amazing. Because I keep hearing this when someone dies. It's like, oh, he was this amazing person. He did this. He did that. And I'm like... He was a piece of shit. Yeah, this person was a bad person at this part. It's like, don't talk about that. I want you to talk about the terrible stories. And every time someone tells a terrible story where it makes someone laugh, you all take a shot. But then like, <laughs> like that's like a terrible story that – because sometimes those terrible stories are, you know, the things that you remember with affection. Oh, and I know. But it's like I, I – Like grew- that's what makes that person them. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, But I, I grew up in this area where it's 
in Inland Empire where it's like we just talk so much shit to each other. So it was a kind of a sign of endearment, mm. you know, and it's like if you didn't talk shit to the person, they they weren't really a friend. It's like you weren't looking at them the same way. Mm -hmm. So I always find there's something beautiful and like tearing a person down a little bit mm -hmm. just because, you know, it's like, but I appreciate you <laughs> because you're taking that abuse a little bit. Yeah. Which, and also like it's the suggestion that I love you despite all of your. Flaws. Yes. You yeah. don't have to be a perfect person. No to inspire like love and affection yeah exactly so it's a uh, it's something i uh i hope uh i just talk about this more too it was, I was like if i die i'm like i told my sister i'm like tell the terrible stories first and then you can go on to the nice ones but tell the terrible ones because that's gonna make people laugh <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you know funerals should be should be full of tears and laughter yeah it's a strange it's a strange thing yeah it's a, it's a weird one yeah mm. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk more about Nathan's podcast and so much more. So hang tight. We'll see you in just a minute. This episode of Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Blue Chew. Are you a man struggling with erectile dysfunction? Are you afraid to talk about it, making you feel ashamed and alone? Well, you are not alone and there is help available. This is the part where I introduce you to Blue Chew, the revolutionary chewable pill that has helped countless men with ED. With Blue Chew, you no longer have to worry about awkward doctor visits or embarrassing conversations because you can get your prescription all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. Simply fill out an online consultation, and if you qualify, one of their medical professionals will get you a prescription and have it delivered right to your doorstep. But it's not just about convenience. Blue Chew is also effective. They use the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, resulting in stronger and longer lasting erections. And with Blue Chew's chewable form, it works faster than traditional pills. And what if I told you that you could try Blue Chew for free? Just go to bluechew.com and use code HOLLY to get your first dose for free. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com code HOLLY to try it out risk-free. Don't let ED control your life and hold you back from enjoying intimacy. Take back control of your sex life with Blue Chew. All right, guys, we are back. So, Nathan, speaking of all of the things that you do, yeah. you also have a podcast. So, tell us about that. Um, like, tell like like just about the show or why did it come to be. How about both? All right, let's go with what. Uh, let's go with uh, what it is. The show is the the basis of the show is basically bringing people on to interview them. And the first rendition of the show was bring you on, and I cook you, and however long it takes me to cook you whatever meal you want is how long the interview goes for. So it Does used anybody ever asked for something like super complicated that's going to take you forever? Luckily, you know what? Porn people never had good palates to begin with, <laughs> uh, nor are they really educated in food. Well, I'm lucky if any of these people just don't eat at Taco Bell all the time. Um, okay, but like I think the, the longest episode we had was um, Aussie guy who doesn't work in the industry anymore, um, but he asked for a leg of lamb. It took me like four hours to roast this thing. So we did the show for as long as possible before we just cut it. And we're like, we're just going to have to wait for this thing to be done. <laughs> just uh, ran out of things to talk about. Just ran out of things to talk about. Um, but honestly, not that many people like ask for insanely complicated things. If there's a fuck up, it's just because I fucked up and I literally went from work straight to here and it like wasn't have much prep time. Um, but now because of uh, the way the show works and because it um, – what's it called? Retention rating. Uh, we figured out it might work better is if I bring the person on, I teach them how to cook something. Mm. And so we might have different renditions of that in the future. But like as of right now, now it's a uh, we bring porn people on, or actually anyone, anyone who I find interesting, mm -hmm. which doesn't really sit, settle as well with my people who watch it. But I don't give a fuck because at a certain point, I'm tired of listening to porn people talk. <laughs> Dude, I struggle with that a lot. Like some of my favorite episodes yeah. that with I think the most interesting people mm -hmm. are some of my lowest rated oh, yeah. or lowest watched yeah. ones. I'm like, this person was so fucking fascinating. Yep. But people were like, oh, it's not like a huge porn star with, you know, 10 yep. million followers. Like, I don't no care. tits. No tits. I'm like, Fuck. This is going to do way worse than Angela. <laughs> it, sadly. <laughs> it's going to. Sadly, it will. <laughs> but like, oh, for a good example, I had a um, – the lead – uh, uh, lead special effects guy from Call of Duty come mm -hmm. on my show and he's the guy who makes all the destruction happen right mm -hmm. fucking fascinating mm -hmm. absolutely fascinating didn't do that well no 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 yeah. but you know I mean, Haley Spade like, came on did great your audience is looking for like one specific thing also too when you think about like 
if we're talking about YouTube, the YouTube algorithms and stuff like that, people are looking for certain things. Yeah. And so. and so that's what we're trying to do, figure out right now is how to fix the algorithm and make this work a little better because I understand what my platform is. I, and I, what I used uh, to make this work for me, but it's like trying to build something where it's like, I can be a person who talks to anyone and interviews anyone because the key component of this show is food. And how do I make you talk through food? Mm -hmm. You know? And when I first started the show, it was the idea of, okay, I'm on set with people. I get to know you for about five minutes before we have to fuck. And it's like, what's your, what, let me see your test. What do you like? What do you not like? Let's go through that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, one of the reasons I got in the kitchen was because of Anthony Bourdain. Mm -hmm. I love his show. I love what he did. And so I'm like, maybe I can do something like that, you know, where I, I bring people out and I interview them as I cook for them. And maybe, and oh, maybe uh, the, each person can give me a, a dish that their mother or dad or grandma they made. And I try to replicate that. Come to find out, most important people don't have the best home life. So that got scrapped real fast. And, um, <laughs> Just asking certain people like, hey, what do you want to eat? I don't know. What do you want? I'm like, oh, it's just like fucking having sex with these people. <laughs> uh, it's great. Uh, I don't know. Uh, like then I'm going to, if you ask me, I'm going to always pick some crazy Asian dish that I've never had before. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, I gotta see if this works. Yeah. But you, so it was just the idea of bringing you on and let's let you talk and let's get to know you better because most of the people, I mean, even people I've worked with, but fucking 30 times. I don't really know. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's true. and there's people in the industry that it's like that I've known for a while. And it's like, you never get past that wall because we all put up these walls because we don't trust anyone in this job. Mm -hmm. So that's what the show is basically trying to do is just get out, get to talking to people enough to where I can understand them at a deeper level, you know, mm -hmm. because it's kind of depressing knowing that I've been in this job for seven years. I don't really know anyone. Yeah. You know, and it makes you feel even lonelier every day because you don't know anyone. Yeah. And it's like, I'm around people all the time that I don't think, do I, do I really care about them? Do I care about some of these people? Do I really, if I, if I need something, I couldn't really ask any of them because mm -hmm. don't trust or anything like that. So the show kind of did that, uh, which made, made a little bit more friendships a little bit better. But also one of the things I didn't know was going to do was give people a better understanding of what this job was like. Mm. I, I, I really didn't expect, like, I guess I should have expected that, but I didn't know that it was going to be like that. And one bigger thing I remember hearing from a younger male talent, he's like, do I watch your show to uh, get a better understanding of what the girls are like? I'm like, oh, you're a fucking genius. <laughs> I wish I had something like that. Cause I went in every, every fucking, uh, uh, like scene just cold, not knowing what this girl was going to be like. And I was mm -hmm. like, Oh, if I had something like this, I totally watch it all the time too. Yeah. Fucking brilliant. I think you give them back to the people. I'm just, I'm a man of the people, you know? <laughs> Give them back. But isn't that like one of the interesting, because I've found that the same thing with this podcast, like an unexpected side benefit is, yeah, getting to know people. Yeah. And I have learned so much from doing this podcast. Mm -hmm. Like it's opened my eyes to so many different things and given me a lot of compassion for, you know, people and mm -hmm. situations that I never really thought about before. And it's just like, it's, I feel like it's made me a better person. I Yeah, it's definitely made me way better at communicating, which is one of also the goals I was trying to get at when I started this because my job doesn't help me communicate at all. Yeah. But like, like this does. Yeah. Just being able to sit here and like, oh, just you talk, then I talk, then you talk, then mm -hmm. I talk. And I'm like, because <clears throat> like, I have such bad ADD and I always like, my opinion, you know. Yeah. So it's uh, helped me uh, stop and listen a lot more. Same. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting too because it also makes you realize how little – we sit down and talk to people these days oh. without like a phone in front of us, without mm -hmm. some kind of media distracting us. Like, you know, wh how often do we really just sit down with people and just talk to them? Like we don't do that anymore. Uh, I think I can like count on my hands in the last couple of years, a handful of times. And they're yeah. just with, there's certain people I do that more with, but like really, it's like I need to do other things as I'm talking to people, but like actually just sit there and communicate. Never. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 My other question is, um, how come I haven't been on your fucking show? Uh, I have this weird thought process where I just figure everyone's so fucking busy. They don't want to come on my show. Um, <laughs> and I can give you like a fucking cup? family recipe. Oh, I was going to say a cup. We can cook like something South African. We can cook something English. Uh, honestly. I can tell you how to make proper British roast potatoes. Oh. Most Americans don't do it right. Oh. Got to use goose fat. Oh, oops. I got duck fat. Yeah, I got jars of duck fat in my house. 
What do you use those jars of duck fat for? <laughs> Masturbation. <laughs> no. I, okay, that was supposed to be implied. Yeah, you were I'm, supposed to say that out right. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I, I cook everything in like in like duck, bacon, or just like, depending on what it is. I got, a, I got like a jerked pork at home right now that I cook in a- A co- jerked pork? Yeah, jerked pork. Mm, <laughs> mm, it's lovely. <laughs> but I cook it in uh, coconut, uh, coconut oil with mango and onions. Mm. Oh, and jalapenos are so fucking good. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, with what red beans and rice. It kind of sounds like I would want you to cook something that you were good at. Because like, if I was to bring something, I like how I've already put myself on your show. Yeah, that's fine. I've just I've just booked myself on your show. That's fine. Be on Congratulations, the show. you're welcome. Yes. Um, Did you guys hear? <laughs> whereas, like, if it because it would be saying that like I've had a million times, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's also another aspect of the show that I've always wanted to try would be bring someone in. They teach me how to cook something. Mm. Um, like, uh, like, have you had Lumi Ray on? No. Lumi Ray was a cook. And okay. so, uh, she's come on the show like twice now, but one of the times was I gave, I, me and her got on the show. There's five items on the table. We had to make a dish and neither of us knew what we we're going to make. It was just like, here's five things. Let's go. Wow. Yeah. And so that was a lot of fun, uh, fun episode. And I think one of the next episodes is going to be bringing pe- like other porn people been on the show and just be like, here's, here's a fucking, uh, here's a dish. Make it. No, you know what yeah. you should do? You should do like a master chef's table mm. and like you do a bunch of different dishes and you come in one of them, but you don't tell them which one you came in <laughs> and then they have to guess. <laughs> well, see, the only reason I haven't gone sexual with my show because I had people be like, why don't you make it OnlyFans when you do it naked and you fuck with it? But it was like, because I wanted to make it so people could come on the show who weren't porn and not feel weird about it. <laughs> like, not worry if there, what if there was coming. Yeah, there? like what is this? Because I had, a, I had a comedian come on that was on the... Bill Burr is one of Bill Burr's last specials uh-huh. where he's the MC, and she came on and the whole time she had to very much be like, I'm not in porn or I'm not doing this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah we fucking know. It's okay. Yeah. But and so I was like, I was like, after that, I was like, I don't want people to feel like they have to be naked or have to do this just to be on the show. It's like yeah. I want people to feel like just normal about it, you know? Right. Like this is very much, you know, it, yeah, there's a lot of porn people on here, but there's nothing on here that says, oh. We're going to get jerked off under the table, you know? I mean, like that. I mean, that's what you think, but the episode ain't over. Or anything. Fuck yes. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so hard. Um, <sighs> um, but yeah, so that's, that was the goal of trying to do that. It's like, even when I'm making like the, the logo, I was like, what just says nothing. Like, I don't want to be anything sexual. I just want it to be a logo, you know? Mm-hmm. So trying to make good decisions with that, but I'm probably failing and I'll look at it like 20 years from now. I'm like, oh, that's why I fucked up. So, well, I can tell you right now that you fucked up is not taking my come in the dish suggestion. Oh, oh, we're not saying it's not going to happen. that episode would take off. I will say that like, so the reason that I even like thought about that, I saw a porn like, oh God, it was so long ago Hmm. and I don't remember who shot it, but it was literally... This girl did this Gokan scene. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's when a bunch of guys like come in like a jar or a cup and then she drinks it. <clears throat> so gross. Um, and <sighs> instead of like drinking it, she like cooked herself eggs with it afterwards or something like that. Oh, and then, like, oh it's curdled. <sighs> oh, thank. And I just like that just burned in my fucking mind. And I was just like, that and then I feel like there was ass? also like a cooking with cum cookbook afterwards. I don't know. I think it was like a Jim Powers movie yeah, of show. Course, or of course, it's Jim it Powers. Was something but- like that. Maybe not, but I feel it was something like that. And I just remember just being like, "That is, that is like." You know, it was I think it was like in the early two thousands when the internet had just came along, and no, so the Jack boundaries was there. had opened up, and it just became crazy. Where it was like, "How many dicks can you fit in your ass?" You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it just went so extreme. Um, and that was like one of the things, and I was just like, "We've we have lost the essence of what like porn is supposed to be." It's like now it's this shit. <laughs> it's you no, know it seems like it would hit the point where it's just reality TV, like reality TV, jackass. Let's mix porn into both those things. Yeah, you know, bang bus, milf hunter, this that. Like, let's have all these like weird, quirky things that it's just like it's a reality TV. Bleh, let's spit them out, you know, kind of scenario. Spit yeah. it out. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, what what kind of crazy shit could we make? Or do oh let's shove a hot dog on our ass shoot it fucking uh sideways and watch it shoot out that way <laughs> that was such a fucking awesome there's gift. another episode for you <laughs> <laughs> how far could, uh, <laughs> wait what about those scenes where like girls put like stuff in their ass and then they like they like push it out and then they or like girls drink milkshakes out of other girls butts? yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean this all plays these are all these are all the theme of your show man <laughs> i only 
I, you know, I'd feel bad asking someone. Like the nice thing about like, would you yeah. feel bad asking someone that? Because that's not weird. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like the reason I like I like my, the show is like you come on and we're doing something not sexual. We're talking about sexual things, but it's almost it's like wholesome. In, in a weird way, it's kind of wholesome. Yeah. You know, not to most of the world, but it's a, like a wholesome thing. So I don't feel bad about being like, hey, can I fist your ass right now? Yeah. You know, or like because I was like, I'm always asking these people if I can fuck them. Yeah. Just for content or for this or for that. And so being able to be like, hey, come Can over and let you dinner. Yeah, come over and let's and let's not eat. have sex with you afterwards. Yeah. So it makes it, it makes it me feel a little bit better about some sometimes being me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think are some of your best episodes? Like if someone wanted to go check out your show, like what episodes would you send them to? Oh shit. Let's think. Oh god, I don't know. I know some of the worst ones. I, I'm the same way. I'm like, maybe yeah. don't watch this one or this yeah. one or this one. Yeah, we, we made a list of five and those were the worst. <laughs> um, that's, that's, see, that's a hard thing because like some of my favorite episodes aren't the one that did good, you know? Yeah. They, they're, they're just, they're just random ones that I just really enjoyed someone's company. Yeah. Um, Liana Lovings. Okay. Uh, uh, she was a surprising one. She actually just came on the other day and First off, uh, yeah, Leona Levins won't look like Velma. She just embodies that fucking person. She embodies Velma from fucking Scooby Doo. Mm-hmm. This girl's super smart, such a fucking nerd, and she just can talk about nerdy shit all day. And I was just blown away, with, like how how poised she was and how how well she held herself in the show. So that was really nice. She was fun. Um, well, you know what? One of my favorite episodes is actually my buddy Mike Ema. Mike Ema was a a, a vet. Uh, he came back from, I think, Afghanistan and a couple other things, and he did a little bit of um, military medic. Mm-hmm. So he was telling stories uh, about something that I didn't really think about, but I guess I should have guessed, about how all the hookers would be outside the military bases on, I think he said, the 15th and the 25th, or like those are the two times of the month he gets paid, so maybe it was the 5th and 25th. Mm-hmm. And um, usually guys would come back after those days, and like the, the certain things he, that he saw – was like crazy. Like one of his guys came out with like he he comes up to him. He's like, "Yo, Mike, my something's wrong." And he pulls out his pants. His shit's bleeding, and it's like pus and nodules. And I'm like, "I've had sex so many times, and nothing like that's ever happened to me." Wow. But like, and he <laughs> and this guy was doing like running in this shit, and like he's just bleeding all down his leg and stuff. It's just like gnarly stuff. And so he told stories like that. And I just find that stuff just fascinating, you know? Yeah. Um, Did I ever figure out what was wrong? Yeah, I know. He had sex with a fucking, some hooker in some other country that did not get tested. And she had some shit. And so he fixed it up. I'm sure they gave him some gnarly shot of some penicillin or something. Wow. Yeah. Fixed that right up, though. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Always get tested, people. Yeah. No. Or wear a condom. Yeah, or, yeah, that's... Or both. A fucking hell. Yeah, that's true. You know how many people I have to talk to, like... uh, You got to be careful about who you're getting the girlfriend experience from. I mean, how many times I've had to deal with, like, my friends and them just talking about, like, I don't wear condoms. What the fuck's wrong with you? (laughs) And I was like, I now have to go buy my friend's condoms. Just like, dude, like, I fuck girls out condoms because these bitches are tested, kind of, you know, as best they can be, you know? It's like, but, like, if I had a choice, I'd try to fuck every girl with a condom because I don't want to give them something. Yeah. That fucking sucks, but... Well, and also, too, as a male performer now, like, working, you know, condomless with other talent, like, you have a responsibility to not be fucking outside the pool of talent without protection and possibly getting an STD. And who has the fucking time? (laughs) Clearly not you. No. It's like, dude, again, they were were asking me some shit on another side. They're like, hey, how how often do you masturbate? I'm like, fucking never. Like, I got to fucking do a scene tomorrow. It's like, it's not like I couldn't do the scene the next day, but, like, let's say... I just started doing like boy, boy girls and other things again. Cause I fucking hate, I hate doing them. Cause like bad experiences when I first started and mm-hmm. I just started getting back into doing it. And I, you want to be horny when you go in there. And sometimes if you jerk off the night before or the day before, it's like, you're not going in there. Your optimal horny level. You know, mm-hmm. if I could, I'd fucking wouldn't jerk off for three days, go in there. Be like, ah, you know? Yeah. So why don't you like boy, boy girl? I've just had bad experiences with other guys in this industry yeah. where it's like, I don't uh, like, when I first started out, like th- there was, it seemed like everyone was way more homophobic at that point. Mm-hmm. And I would go into scenarios and like, uh, I remember seeing me and Jake were doing, and it was King King bang and Jake, w- Jake was fucking the girl up top. There's anchor down here and Jake's dick fell out and hit this guy's leg. And this dude 
jumped up and freaked out on him. You know, or you're I mean, de- that kind of that's going to happen. Yeah. Swords are going to cross. Yeah. And this is actually a know? big name performer that everyone fucking knows, too. And I'm like, why are you freaking out, bro? This is going to happen. You know, you're probably going to come on you. It's yeah. going to happen. I had to do a VR scene where uh, my buddy Lucky Fate fucking shot at the girl, hit her face and smacked me in the chest and hit me in the face. And were you I- like. Delicious. No, but what I did do was like this. I'm putting this in my next recipe. I'm trying not to laugh. I look backwards. The camera guy's right there just snapping pictures of me. I'm like, <laughs> but you know, shit happens like yeah. that. And so I went through so many scenarios where it's like I got screamed at by a director. I got fucking these guys just made you feel very inferior. And it's like, I'm just trying to get through this goddamn scene, mm-hmm. you know? And so I didn't fucking want to do it. So I stopped doing them for a long time. And I was doing fine. I've done, I've done great just doing boy, boy, girls for just a long time. You mean just boy girl? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, boy girl scenes, and so it's it hasn't really been an issue. But I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll try getting back swinging those things. You know, it's not. I'm not really hurting for work, but I'm like, eh, you know. It's interesting because I remember having a conversation with Lisa Ann about gangbangs, mm-hmm. and we had a long talk about the logistics of gangbangs, which is on one of my episodes with mm-hmm. her, by the way. If you guys want to check it out, mm-hmm. and among all of the many issues, such as where's everyone going to park yeah. and getting all the testing and mm-hmm. all the paperwork and all that kind of stuff, is like you know. You instantly kind of think about like, oh, does the girl like all of the guys? It's actually more of an issue that the guys all like each other. Because if there's like beef between two of the dudes or Mm -hmm. there's like that energy is off, like the you're not going to have a good scene. Um, Two things to that. Uh, D. Williams once said a gangbang is one hard dick where you're trying to get the other ones hard. (laughs) <laughs> and two, I'd much rather be good friends with all the dudes and not give a fuck about the girl. And that's not saying I don't want, want her to have a good time. Yeah. But it'd be better for us to all to be good friends. Yeah. And her come into the scenario because then we're going to treat her well. Right. Because you guys are like going to be in sync yeah. too. It's like, hey, bro, you're, you're going down? High five. Tag me in. Let's go. Yeah. You know? And it's fascinating too. Like I've only shot a few gangbangs, but it's really interesting because, you know, the camera generally cuts the guy's heads off yeah. like we talked about. Um, and so you don't see the guys. No, the but when you're from way back as a director, you see like that unspoken communication mm-hmm. between them. You see the one guy who's in there like look back and be yeah. like, okay, you right. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, it's like this dance. It's actually really kind of fascinating to watch. Yeah. Or you see the guy like he's like starting to get nervous because he's going down. It's like, yeah. Switch out now. Um, and yeah, it's a it's an interesting one. And so that's why I've I've been trying to get back in that place where I'm better at doing those. But like even then, it's like I'm trying to work with the guys that I'm good with. And so whenever because I've gotten to a big enough spot in this job where people ask me who I work with. Yeah. So it's usually the same handful of guys. It's mm-hmm. fucking Robbie Echo, Lucky Fate, uh, Dante Cole. Mm-hmm. Me and Dante Cole have done so many fucking boy boy girls for his site now that it's like, yeah, I just put me and him to work together. It's easy. Yeah. You know? But I just worked John Strong the other, uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. Never really met. Like I've met him once or twice. Mm-hmm. Guy's great, man. He de- like doesn't make you feel any certain way. He just goes in there, does a job. If you need anything, he's like, he, like hey, you need more? Like more time in the pussy, mm-hmm. more or less? This. So it really worked out really nice because sometimes you work with people and there's ego. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things. I was going to ask you, like, do you feel like there's a lot of competition between guys in the industry? I don't know as much anymore just because I haven't had to deal with it as much. But, like, it used to feel like that to me all the time. And I don't know if that was because I was new or if because I just felt, like, insecure about doing the job or uh, because I was never the big dick guy. So I was always trying to make sure I was able to get in there and just do as best mm-hmm. I could. Um, so, but I have met guys who have that ego because of the job. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I do this job, so I'm badass when what it really is is we're – guys who girls have to have sex with because we're, we're all doing a job, you know? So it's like, would some of these girls not fuck us ever if they didn't have to? Probably, you know? <laughs> I will say, though, that I had Maddie Meadows on this episode, mm-hmm. and she said that you had the perfect dick. Oh, She said the, she said a Nathan Bronson dick. Mwah. She actually said chef's kiss. <laughs> Swear to God. I have gotten lots of compliments about my penis, and even, even a funnier one was uh, I've had a handful of people who were like, the dildo I use to fuck girls is the one that you have. And so I have a lot of girls really stoked when I get my Doc Johnson mold because they're like, thank God, because I want to use that on people. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's nice, you guys. So let's talk about penis size because this is something that mm-hmm. men are obsessed with. Oh, 100%. And you mentioned earlier that you don't have like an incredibly long penis. No, I. Uh, Nina Hartley said, it's the most user-friendly cock. <laughs> 
which at the time, like before that, I was like always nervous. And see, then she said, I was like, well, she's fucked everyone. So I guess that's not a bad thing. <laughs> so, I mean, then you kind of like prove the point. Cause I think so many guys get in their head that like, you have to have this massive, huge dick mm. in order to be in porn. And that's yep. like, and girls only want guys with like dicks that big. Yeah. But that's uh, not your experience. Well, I mean, there, there definitely has been that experience. There, there's def. I've met girls who are like, I'm a size queen. I'm like, cool. So we're not fucking or we are like, <laughs> because like I've, I've had girls that never, didn't have sex with me yet. And they said that to me. I'm like, so should I leave bye? Now? or like, do we want to hang out more <laughs> or should I be fisting you as I fuck you? I don't know. Like, well, I can figure something out, I guess. Um, but like most, I'd say the amount of times I've heard a girl say she's a size queen is, and again, that could be because they're just trying not to say it in front of me, but I've had girls tell me it maybe four times in mm-hmm. seven years. Yeah. And four different girls. Um, so most of the time, because girls have to deal with these massive cocks, like Dredd, who is a lovely person and a he lovely individual. such a lovely Such person. a sweetie. Such a sweetie. Yes. But in general, it's like when girls have to deal with like doing that, it's like they have to mentally prepare themselves. Yeah. It'd be like me having to jump out of a 17 story building. You know, it's like, I got to kind of get in the right mindset to do that, you know, mm-hmm. instead of just jumping off my fence, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. You can jump over the fence all day long. You know, it's like 17 stories. Oh, that's a long way down, you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> or a long way up. However you want to think about it. <laughs> so it becomes this thing where, uh, like, they don't have to think about it with me. It's like, mm-hmm. we can just have a good time. I can bang them the fuck out. I can touch back. You know, I can get my balls to touch it. You know, it's a, it's a nice thing, you know, but that's not saying every once in a while, like I would love to experience the girl doing like yeah, yeah. that. That seems like it's cool as fuck. But at the same time, having that much blood go to my dick, having to push that, all that and worry about that massive hog all the time seems stressful as and fuck. And also too, like, you know, a lot of times, like when girls are giving a dick that that's big, mm. that that is that big, a blowjob, like they're not getting the whole penis. No, they're only getting like the head. Yeah, it's so like imagine like getting blowjobs for the rest of your life for like girls only like like. Oh no! Your head. Oh, like I don't want that. Sad, I just right? want the hand job. Like I love hand jobs in general, so it's like <laughs> that works well for me. But in general, it's like it, it's. It's not something I'd want. It seems sad, but it's like every guy thinks that's what they need. I mean, that's what I thought for years. Yeah. I, th- I thought every black dude was better at sex than me, and mm-hmm. I will never have a big enough dick to please a woman. Mm-hmm. That's, how you, that's how I used to think. Isn't it interesting how the porn industry made you feel different about that? Well, it also is the one who made me feel like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's like Well, before- yeah, I mean, yes. So, yes, both. Like, yeah, because The be- experience in it is what I mean. Sorry. Yeah, because before I was in it, that's how I thought. I, that's mm-hmm. why, like, when I went to swinger parties, I'm like, I just was trying to go and just be the most energetic fucking person there. So I just go in there and just destroying people. Mm-hmm. But, like, and then I got into porn, and, like, I remember being in a, a blow bang with, like, the big dick dudes. It was, like... Bambino, Nick Mason, uh, Isaiah Maxwell, who else? There's like two other guys, and it's me. And I'm like, why the fuck am I here? <laughs> this looks, and like, you know when you get all the guys to stick their, like, hip to hip, and there's a girl in the middle? And I'm like, I'm trying to scoot in a little closer. You're and it's push your hips forward yeah, just it's, a little bit more. And it's Bridget B in the middle, I'm just like, this is stupid. <laughs> this, is like, this is so dumb. And her fucking tits, and I'm titty fucker, I'm like, uh... <laughs> Can we just call me in at the pop, you know, like, (laughs) and I've I've done that a handful of times where I'm in these scenes and you put me in there with the bigger guys and I'm like, who the fuck is doing casting here? (laughs) Yes. You want to go railed out? No problem. Hey, you want a big, strong looking dude? No problem. Why you put me with Alex Jones? (laughs) I love Alex. I love Isaiah. I love all these guys. They're great. But I'm like, Why? (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's who else was in it. It was Alex Jones, Isaiah, Bambino, and uh, Nick Mason. Yeah, so I'm like into me. I'm like. <laughs> I, I kind of want to see that scene. You can go look it up. It's what a, is it? It's, uh, was it fucking Perv City? I don't, I don't remember. It was like the only time I ever worked for that company. It was a long time ago. Okay. But if you look at Bridget B's blow bang, you know, okay. I'm sure you find it. Okay. Yeah. So it's just it's just fucking baby Dick Nathan and all these fucking massive <laughs> cocks. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Because and again, I know that I don't have a baby dick, but it's just in general when you're <laughs> to compare. Yeah, yes, when you're comparing on camera, it looks awful. And but also at that same moment, I'm sitting there and I'm like hip to hip and I'm like, everyone's bigger, bigger than me, but it's not that bad. But visually, it looks terrible. Because <laughs> everything's like bigger, we're smaller on yeah. camera. So yeah. it's just like, eh. 
good. So, <laughs> so um, we were talking a little bit before the show about um, the first time you and I ever worked together, mm-hmm. which you don't remember, but I remember it. You tell. So it was for Digital Playground. Okay. It was with Aria Alexander and Damon Dice. And it was like a Sultan thing. Oh, yeah. And so. I, kept, I had those pants. I saw those pants. Do you really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So the premise of the scene was that uh, Aria was the daughter of a Sultan. And <laughs> this whole thing is so cringy. So she, in order for her to like choose a man, mm. she had to like choose a man with like the best penis or like the biggest penis yeah. or like something like that. So the sultan like brought all of these men for her to like oh, yeah, we did choose have a, a penis. Yeah. And so you guys like all had to have like your like yeah. your dicks out and she'd like go around and like reject every one of you. That's right. Like inspect every penis and then be like, this isn't good enough for me. And I just felt so terrible because I was like, this is really mean. Yeah. Like this just feels like a very mean thing. And then like Damon Dice somehow like emerges. I don't know if he crawled through a window or something and then like he fucks her and she decides that like yeah. – but it was creepy because it was like the father mm-hmm. was like allowing his – the father's suggested that the daughter pick a husband yeah, because yeah. of the size of the penis. And then she had to like – it was just like – it was a very weird scene. Yeah, the, yeah, I've been in so many of those. Um, I remember at the, around the same time I was – because I was like I wasn't getting really any work for a while. Right? Yeah. So I was doing cuck scenes. And I remember this one where – I can't remember the girl's name, but it was Shri Deville. Mm-hmm. And – no, it was, a, it was a cuck scene for dog farts. So – Oh, Fuck, boy. I can't remember the guy. Oh, but basically what happened was I was the the brother or something, and the girl and the mom were just talking shit to me how I'd never equal up to a, the Black Hawk or whatever, and so I had to be in the room just jerking off the whole time. And then at the end of it, they're like, hey, can you cry at all? I'm like, <laughs> so at the end of it, Shree's just like, yeah, go ahead, just, just jerk off. And I'm just like, <laughs> And, and I can, like, oh, she's no. so good but the, at, like, was, talking shit. And I was trying not to laugh, so I'm just, like, I'm trying to get tears going up, and I, like, come up my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, super funny. <laughs> How did that feel in that moment? At that moment, I was like, oh, I can fuck. It was like, like I, I think the ego came along, like, ego more now. Like, I wouldn't want to do a scene like that because, like, you build a reputation. And you're like, I don't yeah, want to yeah, do yeah. that kind of shit. But you it's, just come off like being a raptor in a fucking yeah. Universal Studios. So yeah, you're I'm like, like, I'll jerk off like, and cry. I'm, yeah, how much money do you pay me? <laughs> fuck it, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> God, I just want to work. You know, it's like I'm always going into things thinking it's like whatever I got to do to make the the scene, like I want people to want to use me. Mm-hmm. In any job I do, I want to be the multi-tool of whatever job I'm in. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't really, it was just at the time it was like I need to do whatever I need to do to make the scene work. Yeah. You know? So it didn't really matter to me at the time. Uh, like I've had, I've had like a member of Bella Danger talk shit to me during one of the scene when I was doing another cuck one, <laughs> and I was like, okay, fuck, all right. I'll just sit over here and jerk off. At least ja- uh, was it uh, Jack Slayer was being nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you were the cuck in that scene, yeah. right? So she was supposed to talk shit to you. Oh, no, see, this wasn't even when the camera was on. She oh, was she was just, just, just being a dick. And- oh, wow. <laughs> Have you like worked with her since then? Yeah. And did she remember even no. doing that? No, why would she remember that? <laughs> no. I didn't bring that up. I remember the first time working with her. I was like, I walk into a house and it's, uh, this was a uh, director who started working for a new company, right? Uh-huh. And he and he picked me because it's like, we've worked together a bunch of times. And he's like, it's Bella. I'm like, all right. And I'm walking up to Bella. I'm like, hey, Bella. Hey, Bella. Hey, Bella. And she's on her phone. Hey, 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 Bella. Hey, hey. And she's, Hi. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> and so the rest of the day was just like me and the director versus her, uh-huh. you know, just tr- and like not even like versus, but like just trying to make the scene work. And she does what she does. And she's like, she does great sex scene. Yeah. She fucking kills it. But I was just like, as a you know, person want to you know be around, I was like, mm, this is OK. <laughs> maybe, maybe you guys just didn't vibe. Yeah, maybe we didn't vibe. But she was, she's been nice to me other times. Like when uh, I started uh, dating Kira Noir and we mm-hmm. started like being around there, she came up and talked to me a little more. I doubt I, – like I wonder if she even knows who I am at this point. But like yeah. – Yeah. Yeah. She se- It just seems like one of those things is like once you get to a certain place in this job, it's like you don't want to play around with the little people. I get it. Yeah. People get annoying. People ask too many questions. Like, hey, can you – yeah. And I was like I just wanted to say hi just because I was trying to be – polite and trying yeah. to scene go but yeah. i get it dude you you're around people too often and you get a certain disdain for them 
Yeah. And especially as a female talent, I can see that happening a lot. Hey, you know, this is this is dick. Why aren't you going to suck it? Huh? Yeah, there's a lot of, like, really obnoxious male talent out oh, there. Oh, yeah. Who will just, like, really just, you know, the girl's, like, in the makeup chair trying to get their makeup done. And the guy's just fucking, like, yapping like, in her ear. Just, like, let me eat your pussy while you're getting makeup. Yeah, on. and she's just like, dude, like, like. Yeah, fuck off, bro. I haven't even finished my coffee yet. Yeah. Like, back off. Yeah, so it's like I try to be as polite as possible during those things like hey hey what's up just try to say hi hug mm -hmm. try not to fuck up the makeup too much and then leave you alone until you're done and then yeah. try not to fuck up the makeup before the scene happens you know yes which is the times that it has happened not my fault girl came on to me <laughs> you know pulling like a tony rebus who yeah. like he would like eat the girl's face off before the scene would uh, even start when he was oh performing god. i love the oh my that god powder Oh, oh my god, man. makeup artist, he's good so bad. <laughs> Love you, Tony, but fuck, man. He's like so enthusiastic. So uh, I'm sure we've, I brought this up earlier, um, that you've had guys ask you, you know, the how can I get into porn question. Yeah, yeah. a lot of in all In all seriousness, how would you answer them? Don't. Okay, there you uh, go. No, There's no. your answer, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go fuck yourself. Uh, no, um, how I would answer it was, I would ask the questions that in order to ask like someone to like actually listen to me on that, that you'd have to believe me mm -hmm. because me just to be able to say, are you sure? Mm -hmm. Really think about that. Really think about what you're asking. Cause this is something that doesn't, it's, it changes your life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for good, sometimes for bad. It depends. It depends how you look at it. But if you would have told me all the things that I would tell you, when I was younger, I wouldn't believe you. I'm like, oh, he's just trying to hog the pussy. Because mm. as a guy, you're competitive. As you got the mm -hmm. testosterone. You're like, no, no, it's, I can do it. I can do it. You know, I'm, I'm different, you know? Yeah. No, you're not fucking special. You're not a snowflake. You're just, you're not the special snowflake that's flying through the air. You're, you're going to go to the same issues everyone does, you know? Yeah. And if every male talent would be honest about that, it's like there's plenty of times in this job where this is not the best career at all. Mm -hmm. it is hard it's hard on your mental mental well-being it's hard on your physical well-being it's hard it's lonely it's like it gets to a point like where if you keep doing this job for a long time the dating pool gets smaller and smaller because if you want to date anyone outside the industry that's hard if you want to date someone inside the industry it's fucking hard there's no place where this job this makes your life easier with a relationship or finding love that's mm -hmm. that's just fucked Mm -hmm. um, and that's the same for people who just work in the job. Mm -hmm. You know, people like I've seen camera people, they've just gone through relationships because the people can't handle it, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. that that's fucked up. STDs, they happen. Um, that's just something that's going to happen. You're going to get certain things. That's just going to happen. Um, you're going to have to deal with, for maybe the first time, your dick not working at all to a girl that you think is beautiful. Um and you have to sit there and be responsible for the fact that the makeup artist is there and everyone is like trying to get this shot done and be like, it's not my day, guys. Yeah. And it's a lot of pressure. It's, it's a lot of pressure. Basically, the whole scene rides on your performance. Yeah. The, the, the scene is about the girl, but the whole thing don't work unless my dick works and I come. Yeah. Which I, the coming part, I'm always blown away how much pressure people put on that when we can fake it almost every time, make it look better. Mm. We're, we're talking about what? Like popping. Internal pop shots? or No, even external. So give me an example of a... Because I have tried to do the fake pop, mm -hmm. and I find that it's difficult to make it look real. Um, I've just done so many for different companies, and I know that apparently in Europe, they just shove fucking stuff up their dick hole. I just heard about this one, which no. I was like, I don't want to do that. But no. apparently, uh, trans community, they do it a lot too. Okay. Um, but uh, I've done ones where you like tape... Like Cetaphil? Yeah, Cetaphil or something like that. Up your penis I think they. I think they how use, do you, I think how they do, use a lube. How do you get it out again? Just, I guess you just fucking press it out. Like, I guess you grab the bottom, and just like a toothpaste. Yeah, tube. <laughs> so apparently, there's that. But like, also, I've taped tubes to the bottom of my dick. Um, and you had taped tubes. Yeah, tube. But that's like a whole. Okay, so you have to be prepared for that. You have to come to set with the tube well, and yeah, the but, lube. But usually, for this is for the shot. this is for the company. Right. If this company, like, company wants me to do eight scenes a day, uh -huh. they're gonna usually provide that. But again, it's like even if I did provide that, most people, unless I did it a handful of times aren't going to believe me that it, it works, you know? Yeah. But because you are you're, a stunt guy, though. I'm a stunt guy. So like, but, like, because you know of, do those, I, that movie magic. I do a little. I know the camera angles. <laughs> but, yeah, so it's like just because of how much pressure it gets put on you to come, I mean, sometimes that takes that takes up half the, the, the fear of doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, let's get my dick up and let's get it out. And it's like 
knowing that every day I have no idea if my dick's going to work. Hmm. Having that pressure hold held over you because this job is such a mental game, like you said earlier, where it's, I just need to be excited. I'm not always excited. Mm -hmm. People die. Things happen. Um, I'd much rather be at home with my fucking dog than be at set fucking this stupid bitch one more time because she's such a cunt to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, these are things that happen. It's like, not all these girls want to fuck you at all. Yeah. And they make you feel like it sometimes. And, and so it's like, you kind of get put in a spot where you just feel down about your life a lot. And it just, it's depressing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, is that, is, is showing up to AVN or these events with like two girls on your side worth all the extra shit is being in porn uh, like, so you're on sites all over the world. So dudes will come up to you and be like, bro, I jerked off to you. Or I had one guy come to me. He's like, I've been jerking off to you since I was 15. And I'm like, I don't want to fucking know that. <laughs> you know, is that worth it? I like, is it worth it to do something that in the long run brings you a lot more negative than positive? Does it? I don't know. Is it worth it? I've done a lot of cool things. But again, I was always, and since I was younger, I was trying to be, uh, I was trying to find myself through like a whole sexual thing because when I was younger, I got told I was small dick and I was terrible in bed. Interesting. And so I was always trying to prove that I wasn't that. Mm -hmm. So this, was it the optimal thing for me? Yeah. I was a very sexual person and I loved to fuck. But at the same time, I could have just as easily just been in the swinger community, just as easily been like, guy who fucks a bunch of people on Tinder is like, there's easier routes to do instead of putting this kind of pressure on you. Mm -hmm. Like I know there's camera guys or cam like people that work in the industry that like want to fuck girls. It's like, Oh, maybe I should be a porn star. Maybe mm -hmm. I should do this. And I'm like, why you already have the talent pool right there. Mm -hmm. Just flirt with one of the girls. And I'm sure she's going to fuck you. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's not that hard. Go get tested and be a stunt cock for her to do clips for. Her. It's like, it, mm -hmm. it, but it's like also if you be that guy now you don't get to enjoy because now you're just trying to come mm -hmm. so it's like okay i need to hold camera i need to do the lighting i need to make sure this works i need this sure this 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 works and it's all this all these things that come up so it's not just fucking mm -hmm. it's work yeah and so it's like this puts it at a point where it's like i even look back on the last couple of weeks and it's like when was the last time i even got to fuck someone or really enjoy it or have even believe someone they really wanted to be there mm -hmm. because this job has made me not believe any woman actually want to fuck me Interesting, you know, and I know there's plenty of chicks out there. They, 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 they do, and I, and I fucking appreciate the fuck out of them because they, they tell me and they have to tell me multiple times. Mm -hmm. But it gets to that point where it's like, do you believe most of these people? Because we all say we're coming, we <laughs> all say we're enjoying it. Yeah. There's plenty of times where I'm not enjoying my cum shot because I'm just fucking just trying to white knuckle this fucker out of here so I can go home. Mm -hmm. But having said that. I have traveled across the world. I've I've gotten got to go to Australia, England, France, Curacao, um, Canada, all over America. Um, I was almost supposed I was supposed to go to Taiwan last or a couple weeks ago for porn. I it's something I never would have thought would have happened was me go anywhere because of my dick. Mm -hmm. Just not even that was never even a thought in my brain. Yeah, and I have traveled all over the world because of that. It is bananas to me. Mm -hmm. And it's just still wacky to me that like I've gotten to a place because of that. It is, it's mind boggling. It's I, like every day's I still go show up to I'm like, this is weird. People are paying me to do this. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fuck. So I mean, but like, you know, and I'm, I'm and I also, I think I may have had, had a last couple of years of bad experiences because of relationships and relationships give you bad taste in your mouth and makes it hard to do the job and whatnot. So it has been a bit of a struggle moving through those and actually just trying to appreciate the job for what it was, mm -hmm. you know, getting back to a place where you like, just, just like to do it, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe that's already far gone because I'm too jaded at this point. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm searching for, it. and the, the last couple weeks have actually been a lot better and a lot more fun, even with the people who I didn't want to work with because they didn't want to work at all. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, how many days a week, a month do you work? It depends. I've had some where I'm working almost every one of them and that's doubles and shit. So <laughs> could you work less? Do you think if you worked less, you would like your job more? Uh, yes. No, hundred percent. Uh, the problem was I started putting a lot more time and effort into the YouTube to make that work better. Not only that, but I was trying to make all these other forms of my life work better for me. So that costs money. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's been one of those things of trying to equal out how much these things cost to how much I'm trying to save because I would like to leave this job at one day and not feel like I just spent all the money on I have no what idea what. Yeah. So it's been trying to get me back in the green with also trying to push these other uh, facets of my life to be in a better spot. And so I can come out of this on top because mm-hmm. there's too many stories of people, you know, life after porn. Mm-hmm. where it doesn't go well, yeah. you know? Whoa. So I'm trying to be able to leave it on a high note and not a downfall. Luckily, I don't do drugs. So that helps out a lot because I'm sure if I had a cocaine problem, that would make this a lot harder. Yeah. You know? But uh, just trying to better it. And so I think this is going to take a little bit longer of me being numb to the world mm-hmm. before I get to a spot where everything's working out well. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I can absolutely understand what you're saying and i will say like from my perspective and again like you and i have pretty different jobs in the same industry Mm -hmm. but you know i've been in this industry for 25 years and i've worked like really hard my whole life to get to where i'm at now and these last couple years like since basically i had a baby Mm. like i've cut down on my work tremendously like i don't work nearly as much as i used to and it's like shooting jobs and stuff like that Mm. and like i'm doing okay and sometimes i'm just I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like surprised by that. Yeah. And I'm just like, I should be working more. And I'm like, wait, no, no, no. You worked really hard all of these years. Mm. So you could get to a point where like you don't have to work as much and you can enjoy like your time with your family now and stuff like that. I have to keep reminding myself that I deserve, I deserve that break. And that's something I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working on right now because I think that's – it's mostly a mental thing for me because for so many years in this job, there was no work. Yeah. Or there or there'd be work for like a month and there would be four months with no work. Yeah. So since quarantine, uh, this is when I started working every day. Yeah. And so it hasn't really stopped. This last two months have been a little bit slower, which has been super nice. But like it didn't really stop since quarantine. I just fucking worked straight through the last couple of years. Um, and – I'm at a place now where I think at least, and I'm trying to tell myself over and over that it's like, I'm not a replaceable asset Mm -hmm. to this job. I'm kind of something that people at least moderately need. Um, And I'm in a good spot with this. If I say no to work, it's okay. Yeah. You know, because I've never, I've heard, I've heard about like new guys and people in the job who just like, "Eh, I just wasn't feeling it that day. So I didn't go in. I'm like, you can do that. (laughs) <laughs> it, it, it fucking didn't even make sense to me i was like if i have a job i don't care if i'm not feeling it i'm going to make myself feel it yeah you know i'm gonna go do the job yeah um and and maybe that's why i'm at where i'm at now but like i've even been on set with a new, like some of these new guys and they was like i'm not gonna pop today i was like <laughs> I will punch you in the face. <laughs> what do you mean you're not going to pop today? <laughs> fucking you fucking white knuckle it until something comes out, dude. Cause like, it didn't make sense to me. It's like, I spent so many years just sweating my ass off. <laughs> just, just fearing that they would never hire me again, but yeah. people still hire them. And I'm just like, you'll still get hired. <laughs> Which I was blown away by. Cause I just figured that every time I'm there, if I fuck up a little bit, they will never, if my dick even goes down a little bit, they're not going to want me again. <laughs> because, I yeah I God I, I so relate to that uh, that idea that, that yeah and then I was talking to somebody uh, who you are you we you and I are somewhat close in age are we close in age thirty four fuck dude we're not even <laughs> remotely close in age what am I thinking yes I'm we are fucking ten years older than you I'm like we're the same age right no uh, no Holly you're an old bitch <laughs> no 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 same z's <laughs> but I was talking to a friend of mine who is my age mm. and she was talking about, and I hate to sound like the old lady who's like, ah, this <laughs> new generation of kids. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I do come from, I think, a generation of that. It's just like, you never say no. You work like really, really hard. Yeah. You push through everything. And, you know, there is this newer generation that actually – you know, you can say, well, they don't know how to work hard yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Or you could say they know how to set boundaries. A hundred percent. Which can. is an interesting way to look at it because you're like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Like, actually, you can say no. You definitely can. But from my experience of what I've done in life, you know, it's going from working construction to be working in kitchens for mm-hmm. years. You know, it's like you're saying no to the person who's telling you what to do. Get the fuck out of my face. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't want to talk to you. It's like you're not worth being here if you're going to – like it's like this is the job. Mm-hmm. And so – and I agree with you. It's like especially for a job where our job is sex, mm-hmm. there needs to be boundaries. And maybe that's where I think wrong. But at the same time, 
if you got hired to do a job, or the, the way I would say, if I'm doing construction and I came without my tool belt, they're going to send me home. Yeah. You come to work and you can't fucking do one of the two things you're supposed to do. It's like, okay, you can't act. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. You know, don't come fucked up. Okay, that's fine. But if your dick doesn't work and you don't come, and I understand there's definitely times of this job where I failed scenes, definitely failed scenes. And I tried to let them not pay me. I like, don't pay me. I fucked up. But for you to still expect money for not all the work. Yeah. It's like, if you got your dick up and was able to fuck the whole time. Okay, cool. 50%. Mm -hmm. But if you don't come, that's the other 50%. Mm. You know, unless we're doing fake pops. But like, again, this is like, it's, and maybe again, maybe I'm thinking this wrong because it's like, I've been, I struggled so hard to make that work for me for so long yeah. and them just be able to say, nah, I was like a little irritated, but maybe that's because they know how to set boundaries. But it's again, if I set boundaries like that in any other job, like, again, if I was in the kitchen, I'm like, mm, I don't want to make the filet mignon today. <laughs> yeah. What would yeah. they say? You know? Yeah. You just come to say, I'm like, mm, I'm not going to take the pictures today. <laughs> don't want to. <laughs> you know again but because it's our bodies doing it yeah it's like i understand we can set boundaries saying saying i'm not going to do anal mm -hmm. that's a boundary saying i don't want to do gang bangs that's a boundary saying you're not going to do the two things that we're supposed to do in this job and still expect your full rate and not only expect your full rate but ask more than the guys who've been here for years yeah yeah no i mean i see your point um and so it gets a little frustrating, you know, it's like, and that's one of the reasons I don't really want like work with a lot of other people, unless they're in my group of people that I like to work with. It's mm -hmm. just like, I don't, I don't even want to be around you physically or friendship wise. Cause I'm like, I don't see us working well together because I've, if I'm doing something, I'm going at this hard, whatever mm -hmm. I'm doing. So, nah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's a weird perspective. No, I get it. Like, if we're doing a gangbang together, we're a team. Yeah, it's like, you got to be on this team. Yeah, it's like, we're a team at this. You know, like, <laughs> let's, like, let's do it hard or not at all. It's like, if we're doing a gangbang and one guy's just going to be limp dick in the fucking corner, it's like, and you still expect to be paid. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's not how this works. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's like, if you're not doing well and it's just not working that day, I get that. It's, yeah. I totally understand that. I've had many times where it's like that. I had one time where I was, couldn't, I was having such a hard time coming and the floor was covered with plastic wrap and whipped cream. And I, it was at pop. I couldn't come, could come. And I fucking ate shit, like <laughs> slipped right out from under me, fucking smashed on the ground. <gasps> Director comes up. She's like, dude, are you okay? Luckily I'm the only guy who fell and I do stunts. So that really worked out well in their <laughs> favor. And I got back up. And I'm like, Oh, but that smashed to the ground reset me. And I was able to pop right away. <laughs> but like, so it's, that's what you need. You just need to smack across dude, the head so, really good. Honestly, sometimes because you just need to get out of your head. Yeah. And yeah. like, the, well, like if it's too hot, you can't come. I put my balls in ice. Like I'll put it right <laughs> in. Hey, but it's just resetting the system. So yeah. it's like, okay, no, I can do this. Yeah. But it's just, it's just something where people think that they deserve something for nothing. Yeah. And you've done nothing. You are nothing. You're nobody. It's like, you're coming to this job. You're nobody. You got to work at being someone. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you don't need help. I'm not saying that guys shouldn't give you, uh, like, shouldn't be a little bit more respectful to you. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying if you come into this and you just think that I deserve a thousand dollars per scene, and we'll see if the dick works. <laughs> I've heard of guys that are like four thousand dollars a scene and their dick doesn't work, and they hired him again. Yeah, that's probably not the director making those decisions. But I'm like, doesn't really. It's like, what what are you guys doing? Yeah. Like, it's like. And then, then you, then you complain because my dick's too small. So I'm like, but it works. <laughs> but it works. So yeah, that's uh, that's just a a weird thing I have with male talent. It's like, dude, it's like you guys want to talk to me, and like I'll tell you whatever I know. I know I know the other male talent out there would totally talk to you. You know, it's like just talk to them, ask them questions because it's okay. Yeah. You know. All right. Before we wrap this up, I do have a couple of questions from my Patreon members. Yay. So uh, let me pull those up really quickly. All right. Um, actually, you kind of sort of already answered this. Fuck yes. Um, Oscar uh, asked him what it's like cooking with Lumi Ray, another chef slash porn star. Uh, Lumi Ray is fantastic. Uh, she's so much fun to be around. Um, her grilling isn't amazing, but that's also something that's because she didn't really grill in the kitchen. But uh, me and her can actually work on that here pretty soon. But she's a great person to be around. She's one of my uh, 
a person that I, I worked with when she first started, she told me she was a cook and I just kind of kept it at arm's length for a bit just cause I'm like, I don't believe people, but she's, she was a cook and she's just so naturally that person. She's fun to be around. She's just, it makes you feel like you're actually talking to someone, you mm-hmm. know, which I guess that sounds weird, but she's lovely. She's fucking hot. I'm about to do a whole movie with her this week uh, for Ricky Greenwood where it's all about cooking. So, oh, cool. Yeah, so it's just me and her as the leads cooking food the whole time. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun cooking with Lumi. Oh, my God. That sounds yeah. like fun. Me and her, I think, are going to be cooking duck on Sunday night. You should tell um, Ricky about my idea about coming in one of the dishes and then seeing if somebody guesses who it is. <laughs> I'm going to give it to Ricky. <laughs> give it to Ricky. This is all his like, idea. That's Nathan. That's Nathan. <laughs> Oh my god, that's even better! You do a gangbang, and then guys come in different dishes, and the girl has to guess who came in what dish. Oh. I'm telling you, man, these ideas are fucking gold. And we should do. We should take all the uh, the uh, what are the pastry things that uh, Spiegler always brings? Yes, and just come a little bit inside each one and give oh it. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! It's oh, cream filled. I do. I just had uh, Spiegler was on set the other day, and he brought those. I like, had one of these. I'm like. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. Just so, for those of you who don't know, Spiegler's an agent and he is like famous for bringing like a big box of pastries to yeah. whatever set his girls are working on. It's just like his thing. Yeah. It's very nice. Okay. Hugo has a couple of questions. Um, his first one is what's more important for health, fitness, or diet? Both. Okay. It's, a, it's a, like, that's like a weird thing. Fitness and diet, like abs start in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You need to eat well to make fitness work. It's like, if I just eat or if I just fucking work out all the time, but I'm eating McDonald's, I'm still not going to get the, the, the things right. Not only that, your body's not get the vitamins. You just, you need, if you're going to do one, do the other. It's not saying like go on some insane diet, but just eat better. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, I hear people all the time. like, I only work out to eat shitty. I'm like, or learn how to cook you fucking idiot. And just like be better at that. Cause it's like that you only get this once. Yeah. So do better with it. Yeah. Um, tips for dating a non-industry person. Like, uh, like me dating a non-industry person, T- uh, or like them, a uh, non-industry person dating a porn star. Uh, I don't know. He didn't clarify, but my guess would be date you dating a non-industry person. Uh, if it's me dating a non-industry person, you have to understand a handful of things. One, these people are very sexually active. The you cannot get mad at them for wanting to feel things on set. You can't get mad at them for wanting to enjoy scenes because if you take away those narratives from the whole thing, it's you're just gonna have to start shooting your dick up to make it work. Yeah. Um, uh, not only that, but it's like they may or may not want to put you in weird scenarios with them. I know if you're dating me and you're outside the industry, I'm like. You want to do some freaky shit because I only get to do four positions at work. I would love to try a whole buffet of weird shit, but I don't yeah. get to. Yeah. So it's like those things. And also just understand we will fuck up. Understand you need to be better at communicating. And sometimes you need to be the better, bigger person and talking with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because it's, it's, there's so many ups and downs of this job. And maybe the person you're dating doesn't have the best communication skills, hasn't worked at it. And so they just need that person there for them. You need, they need that shoulder. They need the, the, the person to be their rock mm-hmm. because we don't have a rock in this industry. Mm-hmm. It's all, this could be gone in a second and we know that. So it's like yeah. just being that person for them is going to make them love you more because you're solid for them all the time. Right. And uh, don't get mad at them if they shoot with someone doing content multiple times. It's just an easy person to work with. You know, it's like. Yeah, it's not like a preference. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, those, those things, yeah. Okay, last question. How were you selected for Jubilee's episode of Middle Ground of Virgins versus Sex Workers, and have your views changed after that episode? Oh, I can't remember how. I don't, what is he talking Jubilee about? Jubilee was a, it's a uh, YouTube show um, that they basically bring people with two different ideas together. Okay. So this particular one was sex, wor- sex workers, sex workers versus virgins. Okay. <laughs> now, some little backstory is, I did a content scene right before this where I fisted a girl's asshole, Mm -hmm. went straight to there. They ended up needing another girl. And so I brought that same girl there. So it was me, uh, Avery Jane and this, um, this girl that was an escort Mm -hmm. against three virgins. And in my head going into there, I was like, okay, you either are an incel or religious. Mm -hmm. And if you're religious, yeah, I got you. My dad's a pastor. 
It's like, ah. I came from pastor background. This is easy for me. I was yeah. like, I'm like, I could talk to you guys all day long. And so did it change my perspective on anything? No, um, it's, I'm still in the same spot. I was, I was I, one thing I did tell all of them, especially cause one of them is a dude who's 28, good looking kid. It's like, like uh, he's been a virgin. And I was, I told him, I was like, did he say why? Yeah. He's, is he waiting for marriage? All of them Jesus. Oh, so it was all Jesus. It was. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, all of them's Jesus. And Jesus I, for all of them. Yeah, and I, I told him, I was like, hey, buddy. Jesus is such a cock blocker. He's such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but I told him, I was like, hey, bro, when you finally get to the point where you have sex with your wife in this mythological thing, contact me. Because it's going to be fucking awful for you, and you're going to do really bad. So hit me up, and I will give you as many pointers as I possibly can. Because I have a religious buddy who was – dating this one girl for eight years and now he's been married for however long and he's never had any other sexual experience with that and so there's things that happen in that like she gets mad at him for coming too soon or all these things or like he gets nervous and he doesn't know what to do so he calls me up and i'm like he's now, then he was just hitting me up for viagra for a while where he's like i just don't know what to do man i'm trying to make a baby or something like this and i'm like i'm trying to help him out but i'm like at certain points because you don't have the the practice yeah you know so has it changed my opinion anything about talking to virgins? No, it's always been the same thing because it's a religious background, a religious ideology, which I don't believe in. I think religion has a great place at some points, especially for people who are addicts or some, some need a higher power. Um, and also just telling you to stop being a fucking dick. Be a nice person. But you don't need to, you don't need some fucking religious spirit up in the sky to tell you that. You also don't need to wait for sex to do that. You can be a nice person and have sex with people. Whoa, crazy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I try every day to be as nice as possible to people I work with. Some days I fail, just like Jesus did. <laughs> You know, he went through a whole, what was a synagogue and flipped over tails. Not very Jesus-like of him, but he did it to prove a point, you know? <laughs> and, but the whole thing about God is repent and you will be saved. So it's like, just be a good person. You don't just need do your, God to do just it. Just do your best. Yeah, just do your best every day. You no, know? I'm not good with taxes, but every day I try to do better, you know? <laughs> Same thing. Don't need fucking a religious figure because guess what? When it all ends, I don't want to look back on my life and all the things I didn't do. Yeah. I want to look back and be like, that could have been a cool book. Yeah. Or whatever it is at the time when I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I guess it won't be a PDF. Maybe it's some kind of blood cell transfusion that you can give to people out throughout the world. You can just upload your yeah. memories into the metaverse. Yeah. When I when I upload my consciousness into everyone's brain, everyone's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm like Nathan Bronson for a day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Nathan, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Mm -hmm. I very much look forward to coming on your show. Oh, I'll, I'll schedule this now. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for that episode, guys. <laughs> it's going to be the best one yet. Yeah. Cooking with Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Fuck yeah. So what camera do you want me to look at? Uh, that's your camera. Fucking sweet. Hey, guys. So you can find me at uh, Twitter at Nathan underscore Bronson. You can find me on Instagram at Nathan Bronson 6.6.6. .6 you can find me on a TikTok, which I fucking hate talking about all these stupid things. Official Nathan Bronson. And you can find me on YouTube at Na uh, was it? Cooking with Nathan. And of course, if you want to see all my porn, you can go to the, I guess, the porn hub or the X video or wherever else, because you're not gonna buy it. So just go fuck and look up Nathan Bronson. And you can watch me fuck people. <laughs> Why don't you get like a link tree and like put all those? Oh, links I, yeah, on yeah. Actually, if you just go to my uh, Twitter or Instagram, you'll see there's not a link tree. There's a uh, what a, a fucking Nathan Bronson org. Uh, ah. Yeah, so you can go to that. It has all my shit merch store. You Wait, know, Nathan Bronson dot org. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, yeah. Because it was we we did, were surprised we could get the org part. <laughs> yeah, so you can go to Nathan Bronson dot org and also go to all the stuff. It has all the links, everything you want. You can get these sweet merch, which also I was surprised how nice these shirts were. That does look like a very comfy it's, it's shirt. very soft. Yeah, it, it does just look took soft. took a fucking month to get to me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Jesus Christ. Makes, but yeah, cool stuff. Uh, lots more merch coming soon. And we uh, also, every week, new episodes of Cooking with Nathan, where we bring on weird people to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Go to hollylinks.com for links to all of my social media platforms and whatnot. And of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch these interviews, 
streamed live and submit your questions, um, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining, joining us. Ooh. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I will see you next week. <laughs>